Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 27th January 2019. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company, or more importantly, how it may help in your trading, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the About menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at oil and gold using technical analysis. They tend to impact related stocks. When swing trading stocks, we like to align them with the market's direction. We'll study market trend using NASDAQ and NYSE market breadth and technical analysis of market ETFs. In addition to aligning trades with the market's direction, we like to align them with the industry strength. We'll study that using industry scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may look at some of the recent trade ideas shared in the traders forum and look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our commodities analysis using oil. We are looking at the oil ETF USO using weekly backdrop template and daily hop on template. Together we call this at a glance template because this template helps us decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. In the weekly chart, after displaying the bullish headwind, oil has recovered. This week's candle color is bullish, cyan, shape is also bullish, though price closed slightly lower than the previous week. We know that from the red color of the activity bar. In the daily chart, price is very close to the declining yellow direction line and also close to the trend line resistance, the memory trend line resistance. Overall, it is in an uptrend and the weekly backdrop color is bullish. If oil can break out of the resistance next week, you may look for a low risk entry opportunity. Gold ETF GLD. In the weekly chart, we have a bullish shape and bullish color candle. One week ago, price had dropped. That time it created a bearish reversal candle. This week, price strongly went up, created a bullish reversal candle. This pattern is pretty bullish. In the daily chart, gold is in an uptrend. Last Friday, price gap down week, then it moved sideways, and Friday opened with a gap up and continued to go up, closed above the memory trend line resistance. You could take a long trade in GLD on Friday using the gap long day trade setup, and as price closed above the memory resistance at the end of the day, you could either book profit or you could hold on to at least partial position trying to let profit run. In the Monday morning market meeting, I will discuss how you could take the day trade using fine-tuned real-time chart in more detail. From commodities analysis, we move on to market breadth analysis. Here we study the NASDAQ Composite Index and NYSE Composite Index. 
along with three pairs of internals, new high low, advanced decline, and up down volume to understand the real strength or weakness of the market. Here we are using longer term weekly interval. Therefore, you may use this analysis for longer term investment decisions or swing trading, certainly not for day trading. NASDAQ went up this week, recovering for the fifth successive week. NYSE closed with a bullish shape and bullish color candle, however, it closed slightly lower than previous week. Overall, in the longer term, both NASDAQ and NYSE are in a downtrend. What about the internals? All the internals closed above zero, shown by the cyan or the green colors. Only one internal decline, that is the up-down volume of NYSE. However, it still closed comfortably above zero. All the other internals went up from previous week. In summary, we may conclude that though the markets are in a downtrend over longer term. They have recovered significantly for five weeks. Internals for this week are bullish. Should you buy into this market? That may not be safe because market has already recovered significantly. Many stocks would also be at a relatively high price point. You can see that price went up almost in a straight line. Therefore, it may be not easy to find low risk buying opportunities right now. You may wait for price to pull back little bit and then look for low risk entry opportunities again. Let's see if we can arrive at the same conclusion from the market ETFs analysis. S&P 500 ETF SPY this week ended with a bullish shape and bullish color candle. However, the activity bar is in red color showing that price declined from previous week. In the daily chart on Tuesday, SPY displayed a bearish headwind signal. It went sideways for two days and on Friday, it went up however ended with a doji like candle prices at the memory resistance line and it is in between the white direction line and the yellow direction line. This is not a safe location to take a directional trend. You may wait to see if price is resuming the uptrend or is it pulling back and then take your swing trade accordingly. NASDAQ ETF QQQ Weekly candle color and shape are bullish, however price closed lower from previous week. In the daily chart, it displayed a bearish headwind few days ago. Price has not been able to go above the high of that time. On Friday, price closed just below the memory resistance line. Price is also in between the white and yellow direction lines. Similar to SPY, this is not a safe location to take directional swing trades. Dow Jones Industrial ETF DIA, the weekly candle color is bullish, cyan. Shape is also bullish, though it has a small upper tail as well. DIA closed higher from previous week. You can know that from the green color of the activity bar. In the daily chart, price went up on Friday, however, it closed with a doji-like candle, that is an indecisive candle. On Thursday also, there was a doji-like candle, that is showing indecision, and price closed above one memory trendline resistance, but is close to another memory trendline resistance. Because of the doji-like candles, and the memory resistance lines, it may be safer to stay away from directional trades right now.
Russell 2000 ETF IWM this week's candle color and shape both are bullish it went up from previous week in the daily chart price is at the memory resistance line and in between the yellow and the white direction lines again this is a location where you may avoid taking directional swing trades what do we see when we combine the market breadth analysis and the market ETFs analysis? We see that market has recovered rapidly for five weeks and now it is showing signs of indecision. Price is at a location from where it may pull back because it is near certain memory resistance lines and it has displayed bearish headwind on some of the ETFs. You may wait to see where price is moving next before deciding the direction of your next swing trend. That is the conclusion you arrive at from the market level analysis. However, when you drill down to the sector level and further into industry level, stocks fundamental and technical, you are always able to find low risk swing trade entry opportunities where the industry strength, fundamental strength and technical strength all are aligned. One month sector performance. We are studying 11 sectors across three review periods. The red bar represents performance of this week. Green bar represents performance of one week before the red bar. And blue bar represents performance of two weeks prior to the green bar. Together, they represent four week or about one month of performance. This week, nine of the 11 sectors gain, while consumer staples, a defensive sector, decline. And communications services was virtually unchanged. That shows a bullish picture of the sector. Here, any line coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up. Any line coming to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down. Most of the red bars are to the right of the zero line showing those nine sectors gained this week. Consumer staples decline. Communication services was virtually unchanged. Over the last month, the market has made quite a recovery, moving most of the sector performance bars to the positive territory across all the three review periods. You can see only two bars are still remaining to the left of the zero line. All the other bars are to the right of the zero line. That shows how strongly the market went up in last one month. Consumer staples is one of the sectors, the only sector that declined this week. Using the sector and industry scorecards of QH, the real-time sector industry analyst, you can instantly see that consumer staple sector and its industries are weakening, turning from cyan to magenta color. You could see the weakness in real time as it was taking place and use that insight to book or protect profit in existing long positions and also look for shorting opportunities. QH sector scorecard and heat map. Here the 11 sectors are analyzed over 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days, 5 days, etc. Cyan color represents strength and magenta represents weakness. Instantly from the color coding, you can see currently Infotech and utilities are strongest. Communication services and consumer staples are weakest. So if you are looking at sector level, you will look for buying opportunities in Infotech and utilities, shorting opportunities in communication services and consumer staples. If you look at consumer staples, looking to the right, you can see it was stronger earlier. The scores are in cyan color and then it turned magenta. The score became the worst score one 
in the current tree. You could see this transition from cyan to magenta strength to weakness happening in real time and you could take timely trading decisions based on that. This sector scorecard and heat map helps you decide where to buy and where to short. However, sector level is too broad. To make more accurate trading decisions, you may drill down into the industry level. Best performing industries. We are looking at these industries 5 days and 10 days scores. In Q360 degrees way, we look for buying opportunities only in strong industries and then further look for fundamentally strong stocks at a low risk buy point. Following that approach, you would look for buying opportunities in these best performing industries. Five of the best performing industries belong to the best performing sector which is information technology this week. All these five industries are strong over five day as well as ten day periods and you could confidently start to look for buying opportunities during that period. These five industries are semiconductor equipment, technology, hardware, storage and peripherals, semiconductors, electronic manufacturing services and electronic components. In technology hardware, storage and peripherals, these two stocks WDC and STX have optimal valuation. You can see that from Q Vital stock scorecard. They went up after displaying the unique bullish headwind reversal signal at the very low. You could take low risk entry in WDC using Q go with flow trade setup which is a trend following trade setup on 18th Jan. And you could buy STX on 26th December using Q box trade setup which is applicable to double bottom or sideways market. You could take these trades confidently using the unambiguous checklists for the Q trade setups. The checklists are published on the page entry checklist in our website. This is the entry checklist page. We have four standard trade setups. One is trend following trade, go with flow, trend reversing headwind, sideways market trade box and exhausting market trade bounce. If you click on any of these trade setups, you will get the unambiguous entry checklist that you can use to decide easily if there is a trade entry opportunity at the right end. Industry scorecard and heat map using QH. The best performing industries of this week are shown by cyan color under 5 days column. Technology hardware, storage and peripherals is strong this week. It was weak earlier shown by the magenta color in previous review periods. If you look at the underlying stocks, you can find WDC and STX both has excellent valuation shown by cyan color under valuation column. Therefore, you would look for buying opportunities in these stocks. They also pay a nice dividend. WDC pays 4.6% and STX pays 5.7% dividend. WDC using at a glance template. In the weekly chart, it displayed bullish headwind signal at the very bottom. At that time, the candle color was neutral yellow. Immediately after that, the candle color turned bullish cyan and since then price is gradually going up. In the daily chart, it displayed the bullish headwind near the very bottom. Price went up, pulled back little bit, 
creating a higher low and then we had a cyan color candle by that time the weekly candle color was already cyan therefore on this day you could apply the unambiguous checklist conditions for go with flow trend following long trade setup and you will be able to take the trade using that setup right at the close of this day you would put stop just below recent low in this case below the memory support line since then price has gone up enough to cover more than risk distance you could book at least partial position you can see that earnings was on friday therefore you could take the trade using short put vertical that would be a low risk instrument to use just before earnings would you book full position profit in Q systems we have very clear answer to that in this case you would not book full profit why because the industry is strong at present the stock is fundamentally strong optimally valued and technically it is strong it is going up if all the forces are in favor of the long position our guideline is to book partial profit with discipline and then apply trailing stop on the remaining position using Q protection signal and try to let profit run. STX This stock also displayed a bullish headwind in the weekly chart at the very bottom. At that time it created a double bottom in the weekly chart and since then price is going up. In the daily chart there was a watermark support level, pivot support level at this price point. On this day, we had a bull release signal and price closed above the watermark support level. Prior to that, we had heavy activity pointing to possible exertion of bears. If you applied the unambiguous checklist conditions for box trade setup you would be able to take the box long trade right at the close of this candle putting stop just below recent low as price went to the yellow direction line more than risk distance was covered you could book at least partial profit and hold on to the remaining position this is yet another case where the industry is strong, fundamental is strong and technically the stock is going up. Therefore, you would not have any reason to close entire position. You would book partial position profit with discipline and try to let profit run on the remaining position. You may use Q protection signal for trailing stop. In the same industry, technology hardware storage and peripherals, we also have a stock NCR. I discussed this stock in the last market roundup as a possible short candidate. If the stock reversed from memory resistance in both weekly and daily. NCR didn't reverse from the memory resistance yet. It went up but by a small percentage. This stock has negative earnings growth. It may still give a short opportunity if it and the industry decline next week. These are the 10 worst performing industries of this week. Six of the consumer staples industries are among the bottom 20% of all industries. And three consumer staples industries among the 10 worst performing industries. These are tobacco, packaged foods and meats, and food retail. You would look for shorting opportunities in these industries. In packaged foods and meats, LANC is overvalued. It displayed bearish extreme pressure in the weekly on 21st December that captured the all-time high. The daily flow candle color turned bearish magenta on that same day 
as price reversed from watermark pivot resistance. It's not support, it should be resistance. You could take a short trade on that day and that trade ended up giving very high profit. If you miss that opportunity, then you could take a trend following short trade on 18th January. That was a go with flow short trade setup. That trend following short trade has hit initial profit target by this Friday. The initial profit target would be the memory trend line support. In QH, the worst performing industries of this week are shown by magenta color under 5 days column. Packaged foods and meats was stronger earlier, somewhat cyan color, and now it is weak, magenta. LANC is the worst valued stocks, the most overvalued stock in this industry. It has the lowest score among the peer stocks and the valuation score is in magenta color. LANC went down by 8% this week. LANC using at a glance template in this week, the stock tried to go above the watermark resistance but reversed, creating a false upside breakout. At that time, it displayed the extreme bearish pressure. This week ended on 21st December and this was the daily candle for 21st December. That candle tried to go above the daily watermark resistance and reversed created a false upside breakout in the daily as well. And this happened at a level where bearish headwind had appeared earlier. If bearish headwind appears and it can push price down, if price recovers to the same level, it is likely that some more selling would be left and price would fall down again. Knowing that you could take a short trade more confidently on this day, short entry would be at the closing of that day, stop would be just above recent high. As price has fallen down from there, hit the memory support line on this Friday, you would book at least partial profit, more than risk distance has been covered by now. The stock is still overvalued, the industry is weak and technically the chart is very weak. Therefore, you would book partial profit and hold on to partial position with trailing stop trying to let profit run. If you missed the opportunity to short it at the very top using the box trade setup, you could take a shot on this day, the magenta color candle, in the daily chart, the weekly was already magenta, therefore you had a trend following go with flow short trade setup on this day. Entry would be at this price point, stop would be just above recent high here and again you could book at least partial profit on Friday as the stock hit the memory support line. In this way, the different Q trade setups allow you to take a shot either at the very top using one of the reversal trade setups, in this case using the box trade setup at the very top. If you don't want to take reversal trades, then you can wait for the first possible trend following short trade setup and you could take the trend following shot on this day. Both the trades ended with very high profit. Other than the best performing and worst performing industries, we can also identify the accelerating decelerating industries from QH. These are the 10 most accelerating industries of this week. They may not be at the forefront, but they are gaining momentum and therefore you would look for buying opportunities here. 
from Q8 you can see that construction materials is also one of the accelerating industries. This industry is not in this graph because it is not one of the 10 most accelerating industries but it is also accelerating. In this industry EXP has earnings soon on 29th Jan. It has a medium valuation and positive earnings growth in the last year as well as the last quarter though the latest quarterly earnings growth declined from the previous quarter. Earnings is nearby so you would not take a long position right now. On the technical charts you can see that EXP recovered after displaying a bullish headwind in the weekly chart at the very low. You may wait for the earnings and consider buying the stock after earnings if it can break above the daily memory resistance line which is at the 69 price point. As always you will do better to wait for a low risk entry point at or after the breakout if the breakout happens. All the four standard Q trade setups go with flow, box, headwind and bounce all provide low risk entry points so you could look for any of those trade setups if the stock breaks out after earnings. In Q edge the pace column calculates acceleration deceleration. The accelerating industries are displayed with cyan color. Construction material is one of the most accelerating industries. You can see it was weak earlier. The scores were in magenta color. This week score is also not entirely cyan but it is gaining score fast and that is showing up as acceleration under pace column. From the underlying stocks you find EXP which has medium valuation. The valuation score is in yellow color from that you know it has medium valuation. It has positive recent yearly earnings growth and also positive recent quarter earnings growth though latest quarter's earning growth 16.8% is lower than the previous quarter's earnings growth which was 31.6%. Earnings is on 29th Jan. The technical chart is showing strength. If it can break out of the memory resistance after earnings you may look for a buy point. EXP using at a glance template. In the weekly it displayed a bullish headwind at the very bottom. Since then price is going up. The weekly candle color has turned bullish cyan for 1, 2, 3, 4 weeks now. In the daily also it displayed the bullish headwind at the very bottom. And now price is gradually going up. Price is supported by a memory trend line support and it is just below a memory trend line resistance. If after earnings it can break out of the resistance memory, you may look for a low risk entry opportunity using one of the Q trade setups. Lastly, as part of our top down analysis, we look at the decelerating industries. These are losing momentum and therefore you would look for shorting opportunities here. If you look at the sectors, financial sector decelerated most and several industries in this sector decelerated as well. These are investment, banking and brokerage, life and health insurance, diversified banks. These three financial industries are among the 10 most decelerating industries. However, other financial industries are also decelerating. Regional banks is one of them. You can see the deceleration from Q edge. In regional banks, WABC is overvalued. Earlier, it had recovered from watermark pivot support level while the financial sector was accelerating 
which you could easily identify from QH sector scorecard. At that time, WABC had displayed bullish headwind at the price point from where the recovery started. So using the industry's acceleration at that time, sector acceleration at that time, and the technical bullish signal, bullish headwind and reversal from watermark pivot, you could buy the stock at a very low price point. Now what? Now it reverts from memory resistance after displaying a bearish headwind. The same headwind came at the bottom and now it is coming at the top. Looking at the reversal from memory resistance and the bearish headwind signal, at a minimum you may protect or book profit in an existing long position. If the industry continues to weaken, you may look for shorting opportunity in this stock next week. QH sector scorecard shows the deceleration clearly. Financials has the lowest possible score under base column for this week. Base column shows acceleration deceleration, magenta color shows deceleration. Financials is the most decelerating sector. If we look at the most decelerating industries of this week, which are shown by magenta color under base 5 days column, you find regional banks to be one of them. The 5 day score is still in between cyan and magenta, it is not magenta yet. However, the deceleration is shown up by magenta color under base column. Regional banks has many stocks. WABC is one of the most overvalued stocks. Its valuation is in bright magenta color. Very overvalued stock. This week it went down slightly. You may look for a shorting opportunity on technical charts because this stock is overvalued and the industry is decelerating. This is WABC using Q at a glance template. It refers from the watermark support level. In this week that had displayed a pull release signal it also had extreme bullish pressure, which was also a U-turn in bullish pressure. From there, price went up strongly. Then it hit the watermark resistance levels and also the memory trendline resistance level and reversed after earnings. In the daily chart, price had displayed bullish headwind signal that created a watermark support. Once again, the bullish headwind could push price higher. Therefore, when price retested the bullish headwind level, we would expect a bounce up again. Indeed, after a false downside breakout, the bounce happened that took price to the daily watermark resistance and also daily memory trendline resistance. It displayed a bearish headwind now at the very top and now price pulled down little bit. It is already some distance away from the recent high therefore you might not take a short trade right now. You may wait for price to go up little bit and then till down thereby giving you a low risk shorting opportunity in this overvalued stock. If price doesn't go up but it continues to go down, then you may use the real time fine tune chart to look for low risk entry opportunity. This was another example where you could use the Q technical charts along with the industry strength or weakness to catch the stock at the very bottom and exit the long position at the very top. And now you are going to look for low risk shorting opportunity.
those were the regular topics for the weekly market roundup i will discuss more trading opportunities using the live system in the monday morning meeting live webinar open to the public you may register for that session from the education live class page you may also look at our forum page this is the forum address for live application of q360 degrees analysis where you combine industry fundamental and technical strength and weakness to decide long or short trade setups let me summarize the market breadth and market etf analysis shows that market went up for five straight weeks however this week price is pausing it is pausing at memory resistance levels and it is also pausing between the white and yellow direction lines several etfs had displayed bearish headwind signal this week and price has not decisively closed above the recent high yet price is at a point where it is not clear whether it will go up further or it will pull back somewhat under such a situation it may be safer to stay away from new long trades if you have existing long positions which are already in profit you may book at least partial profit or apply trailing stop to protect profit in case the market reverses and if the market reverses then you may look for shorting opportunities the market is in a longer term downtrend therefore it would be all right to look for shorting opportunities if the market starts to go down and using our 360 degrees approach you will look for those shorting opportunities in overvalued stocks in weak industries using this 360 degrees analysis whatever be the market condition you are able to find low risk high probability trading opportunities that is all that i plan to share in today's session thank you for attending i look forward to seeing you in our next session and also in the monday morning market meeting have a great weekend and trade profitably <music>